Let's call the meeting to order, 531. And I will entertain a motion to make a, I will make a motion to accept the minutes of March the 13th. As presented. Have you got a check to look at them? Yeah, I looked at them and uh, yeah. So if you second. I'll second it, yep. Good. Um, if there is not any further discussion, then all in favor of approving the minutes of March 13th, say aye. 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 All right. Appointments. 2013 appointments. Yeah, there's a list. Um. What? Look at how many times Daniel's name is on here. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Laura mm -hmm. sent a letter out to all of everyone asking, you know, if you did not want to be appointed again to let us know. There was only one person on the Animal Advisory Board that doesn't want to do it. Um, so there is an opening on that one, but the rest of these people were, well, silence meant that they were ready to be reappointed. <laughs> there were some that came in and let us know they wanted to, but. Board. Remind me, does that, is that somehow associated with the The animal. It's our own independent animal advisory board. As part of our ordinance, we have a three member okay, right. advisory yes. board, which they've been meeting. They're, yep. they're doing yep. some work on the ordinance. And so, who's stepping down from that? Oh, honey, Lori. And I realized today, as Charlie Boswell drove by me on the hill, that I had not yet spoken to him about rescuing. So I will. Yeah, well, I'll that's what I was going to say is what do we. I'll start another kind of campaign to try to. Um, I don't know. I haven't talked to Deb Lazar about the Connecticut River Transit. I think she was going to go to a meeting to see if it was something she wanted to do. Yeah. So that may be okay. We do have another person. Remember, we kind of said she was an alternate on the Animal Advisory Board. I can't remember her name. So I'm going to call and ask her if she wants to be appointed. But right. I mean, I would suggest we nominate all of the people who have, have accepted them, mm -hmm. get this list down. Yes, exactly. Of yes. Size, and then add, of course, add to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the DRB, in theory, we really only need one person. If they, when is that reorganization going to take place? Do we know? They, I wrote up a recommendation. The Planning Commission met. They approved that recommendation of the language change to those two sections of the by bylaws, the zoning bylaws. So now there has to be a public hearing. So we'll do that before another, before a select board meeting. And then once once the public hearing happens. That occurs, what, at a DRB meeting or where, or is it a? No, we can do it at a select. No, because the DRB oh. doesn't have anything to do with. It's The planning commission writes the bylaws. They're the ones that can change them and, and okay. ask for changes. Then once the hearing, then you guys would approve those changes. That, okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. But you have to go through that whole public process. hearing process. Right. Yeah. So we're close. Okay. And then we would only need one more person, correct? Well, they wanted, I think they want seven. And what do we have? I thought we had, I thought this, if we filled all these yes. spots, um, this would make nine, right? Yeah, but one of, I think we have, I don't know, I have to look again. I thought we only had, oh. yeah, maybe we do have six and then one alternate. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it would be one. All right. All right. What I'll do is and then make a motion to appoint all of the listed 2013 appointments that have responded. Sure. Sure. 
Or have not responded. <laughs> or have not. Well, <laughs> obviously, I'm only nominating the ones that have responded. Well, <laughs> well the letter went out. Or have, so right, have, so right, in, have, in, have in, in absence of response. Response yeah. have implied by their willingness. Their willingness. Yes, okay, yes, there yes. you go. That's a little long-winded, but all right. <laughs> okay. I know Laura will write that up in an intelligible manner. Yeah. And uh, second. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, mm -hmm. good. It's been moved and seconded to approve the list of 2013 appointments as listed. And uh, if there is no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. Right. Okay, wastewater allocation. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion about that? It might be easier to word it so that people need to contact you to renew rather than need to not contact you to renew their position. They used to do that, right, Laura? And it. The problem is you just don't. You don't. You just don't hear from people. Yeah. I mean, they just don't make contact. So if not from you, then we're and then if they get renewing. exactly. Huh. Okay. You'll because definitely contact us if you don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. yeah. But right. Why if we it started. Away, then, like, I, well, they I can always resisted. resign after the. You know. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. No, that's <laughs> good suggestion. Yes. No, I think the problem is that then what what happens then is if those people that don't respond get nixed from a board and then show up at the next meeting saying you know. Wait a minute, how come I'm not on this anymore? And well, you didn't respond. So I, that's the problem we used to we okay. have had in the past. Oh, okay. so. so it works both ways. Right. Yeah. It could go either way. Yeah. So. Usually, if somebody Usually doesn't by the end want of, it, by the, the end of this, clear. Clear. By the end exactly. of this year, we'll have yeah. this all sorted out. <laughs> yeah. And in preparation for the next one. <laughs> okay. Um, wastewater allocation. This is just a. Oh, they want to change it to. They're uh, adding the department. Yeah. <clears throat> so they need to increase their allocation by yeah. one. So we just needed a approval. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing fits about that, right? Nothing so moved. Second. second. Yeah. I'll second. This is the Dino Wiggins house. Is. It's just about yeah, the same glass. Yeah. Just, and, this, is, this is just standard receipt. I mean, and I, I guess whether I, we did a water allocation before, but we, act, we are by default like the water and the sewer commissioners, so we do stuff like this. And, you know, unless there's a reason to not do it, then we typically do it. I mean, if there were, you know, we, we have plenty of capacity. Right. In the system, so. Now, is it, <clears throat> does that mean just with houses that are on the town sewer? Basically, yes. I mean, sometimes we add new ones if they're new construction. There are a certain number of houses, which are relatively few, that are within the village limits that never hooked up. Um, and still, do we still have any reservations that haven't been taken? Oh, well, yeah, we think so. We, yeah, um, a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you had to sign up when the water system was put in. You had to mm -hmm. reserve a spot, or you pay. You paid to reserve a spot, basically, and then if you wanted to follow up on that, but it cost you to get an engineer to design the connection, so on and so forth. So some people have just not done it. But um, but if there's a new construction in the village, mm -hmm. then we then we just. But as far as the town being, uh, like you say, in charge of this, I'm assuming now that for people on a septic system, that, that's right. a different, that's yep. state, right? That's state, but right. it goes through zoning, yeah. theoretically. Theoret yeah, we I get mean. a copy of it, yeah. Okay. We get a copy of the permit that the state issues. Okay. Yeah. But as far as the, like in this case, because they're adding another bathroom and a bedroom, basically, right. we have to increase the amount. And I got this because he came in for a zoning permit, so that's what triggered me gotcha. to increase. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now the other thing, and in this application, if it's a two, mm -hmm. if it's a, a single-family dwelling with an apartment, if they were to put it on a meter, because I there, I would assume they don't use anywhere near their allocation. If they wanted to put it on a meter, could they then 
decrease it to a single ERU, or because it's technically two units, do they have to pay two I units? I think they pay the two, right? I think you sure. have to pay That's two because I think you have to have five two. units that before was, you can meter it and minimize it. Okay. We're starting the, just uh, while we're talking about water and sewer, Laura and I are starting that project next week of yeah, just, yeah, and we've talked to SOS and we're just going to review every, I mean, we just, Tom just have found a place that has apartments in it that he didn't know about. Oh, is that right? So I don't know if they're on sewer or water, but that would be a place where they should be paying more, you know, and I'm sure we're going to find some in the opposite direction right. too. So we're right. going to do a house by house review. Yeah. He's finding this, uh, he's a lister? No. No, Tom, Tom Goddard, Goddard, Goddard fire the fire chief. chief. Oh, 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 I yeah. see, okay, okay. Yep. And he has jurisdiction over res uh, over multi-unit. If, if you're renting an apartment, basically if you want to do something on your house, you have to get a permit through zoning. But Tom cannot come and tell you how you have to do it. He has jurisdiction over commercial properties yeah. over multi-unit so like if you said you wanted to put an apartment in up mm -hmm. at your place it would have to be up to code for somebody right. and he would have right. to inspect it and then and then also for spec houses but spec houses is debatable whether he you know in theory he does but statutorily the state won't chase anything down so people yeah. can argue that if they want to Right. Um, but the state requires inspection on anything that's a rental unit. Mm -hmm. so. uh, okay. Did, did you vote on that? No. I don't oh. think that. Did we, did we move to the second? As far as a motion, and I believe we had a second. Well, I don't even have the motion. I missed that. Okay. He so oh, moved I, it. So I so moved okay. it. Right. Yeah. Second. And then if there is no further discussion, we will approve an application for increase of uh, allocation from one unit to two units for Ted and Helena Dog. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this is just paperwork. Presumably. This is just changing, the adding numbers. Steve yeah. to the basic emergency operations plan, changing the chairman to you. Just paperwork that you just, as a board, have to approve the changes to the operations plan, and then Josh, you need to sign it up here in the top right hand corner. That's good. So, that's pretty. Yeah, it that. does. I think he said in that we accept the basic emergency operation plan update as as presented. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I don't know what <laughs> you don't know about. what it is. <laughs> sure. Basically, I moved what it, it is presented, <laughs> and and we don't. You know, it's it's all there. <laughs> it's it, it's mostly um, yeah. sort of technical data about. Who's in charge? When? What Rose happens? Well, exactly, and then and also just a basic structure of you know mutual aid, et cetera. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it, you know it, it it's who it's what happens if something bad happens. Um, but this is really just the public the paperwork that that addresses each of the of the issues. Um, but it's not. Tom has a full it's, emergency right, it's management all plan down at the fire okay. department. So it's just I updated. Right. So. Just have your phone ready. Yeah, exactly. We'll list right. Steve as our primary person. role. <laughs> our primary role is to stay out of the way of the professionals. Right. I should, I should double check whose name is on copy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 There is like a grid in there that says what each right. person, That's what each where, where <laughs> you are. Yeah, job title. And Vermont State Police. Fall guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Ultimately responsible. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. When I first looked at it when I came here, this happened. They had to change and put my name on it. It's like, okay, give me that. What am I supposed to do? What is my basically public relations and stay out of the way of the emergency personnel? Well, again, you know, yeah. it's, it's the, you know, it's would this be worth modifying a copy of? Sure. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, probably. Uh, I mean, I could at least give you that. that this page. That, yeah. 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 This page. 
Actually, that might be a good one for all of us to update. I know we have yeah, had that in the past. Um, no, and at some point it would be worth going down and it never hurts to have a having Tom yeah. sort of, you know, yep. just walk you through what happens. Um, yeah. You know, we tend to, as, as Scott said, basically our role for the most part is to stay out of the way of the professionals. The only time I've ever really gone down and been down there um, was when Irene was coming and mm -hmm. there was question about um, what areas we might have to evacuate, et cetera. And Tom said, you know, he just said if you wouldn't mind coming down and just, mm -hmm. you know, being here as the representative of the town. So, you know, it's that, it's that kind of situation that we're likely to, you know, if we had a major, major incident, then, you know, it's, 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 it's Tom has named, in fact, the emergency, emergency yeah. manager. Right. Exactly. No, he's yeah. the guy that would do it all. But, exactly. you know, I think our role ultimately would be if town funds had to be approved on yeah, an emergency exactly. basis or, or something like that. An evacuation of civil then, action that had to be taken. Okay. Then, then, then we might, then we would have to be present for that, but we're reachable. Okay. okay. Um, RFP for municipal PV system. So what are we? Well, it seems all that time you read through this. And uh, I have followed up on the uh, special customer municipal incentive rates that the state now has available. They are capped at 10 kilowatt systems. And so even a 50 kilowatt system would be larger than what you'd be eligible to receive incentives for under the first RFP that I submitted a while ago. So we've shifted gears to the second RFP, which is more flexible. And the first page is really where the, yeah. the meat and potatoes are. There's, there's three different types of... Oh, you want the one that says April? Yeah, no, okay. no, no I was right. just pointing out that okay. I should be one. Oh, April 1st. Yeah. No, this is April 1st. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. What I did here is try to create the most flexible RFP possible, but still protecting the town and, and giving a, a sense of, of how to respond to this bid for installers. So there's three different types of systems you might entertain. Uh, type one is where you enter into a five or ten year solar lease where you essentially own the system at the end of that term and, and you pay for the uh, you basically pay for a rate of electricity that is pre-agreed pre upon. Um, and there are all kinds of nuances in these things. Then number two is where you enter into a long-term lease, it's 10 or 20 years, and you have a power purchase agreement, which means you're buying power but not necessarily leasing land to an installer. So the, the system could go in anywhere in Vermont under Green Mountain Power Territory or preferably somewhere in Putney because you're adding jobs and whatnot and so on and so forth. But it's a, it's, a, it's a much broader kind of thing where you're just buying power at a reduced rate from the company that does the installation. And generally these are done where an investor group gets together and right. puts together a system and then makes a contract with the town for the electricity. And the investors make the money on the incentives and, any, and some possible combination of the ad, the electricity adder, which is I think six or eight cents um, that you'd get if you were to have installed the system yourselves, uh, that you'd get back per kilowatt. Um, and the third is, is, a, is, is another long-term solar lease, but it, it's net metered with the town and possibly other towns. Um, and, and again, there's third parties that utilize the federal and state incentives and credits and write-offs. So there's there's some minor differences between one, two, and three, uh, but they are distinct kinds of, of agreements. And then the rest of this is really just how the bidder should respond, um, you know, what, what the details are, what the timeline is. Um, th really, um, these aren't actually uh, expressed in detail anywhere else in the RFP. So if that's something you wanted to, uh, to work on creating more details of, that, that, that could be an improvement that's made, but I would actually wait and see what comes back for proposals because the, the, the game is sort of changing with large systems now. You're getting right. a lot of investors coming into the state. They're doing big projects. They want to see 250, 500 kilowatt projects. They want to basically sell all that electricity in state and, 
you know, and do a number of these big projects, versus the town actually owning, paying for and owning an installation and having a maintenance fee and having the possibility of having to replace equipment in 10 years, it's actually to the town's benefit not to own equipment, right. you know, just to have a power purchase agreement. So we're, we're leaning towards these, one of these different scenarios where the town is just buying a commodity, electricity in this case, at a reduced rate, probably you'll see a 5 to 10 percent cost reduction you know, within the, f the first five years is usually going to be 5% less than the market rate for electricity. After five years, it varies, but it's between 5 and 10%. And you'll see when it comes, when you get your bids back, what people, what installers are offering. Uh, so the town could save money on their electricity by going this way. One of the things you have to think about is how much electricity are we actually using? I don't have those numbers right yeah. here, but, you know, when it comes time to, like, judge the individual uh, right. proposals, we'll have discussed what the town uses in total. Because now we're looking at the potential of offsetting the electric usage for the whole town, the water system, everything. Yeah. I mean, we did do, put those numbers to, I did Yes, we have them. Yeah. We just don't know like what we're using per month or per year necessarily right now. I know we know them. I know we have those numbers. I, and I so, have those numbers too. I just don't have them in my head. If we were to do that scenario of a power purchase agreement, we are not necessarily providing a piece of land for that to go on? That is one of the options in either one or two, but not right. necessarily in three, or one in three, but not necessarily two. I forget which. But, right, so an installer would come in, let's use Baskerville for instance. An installer right. might come in and put a 500 kilowatt system in there if they could figure out how it fits. Or let's say there's a, a large football field somewhere and someone comes in and puts the whole thing into PV and it's 500 kilowatts, and the town would then just sign a contract to purchase electricity and use the right. town's electric meter as the net metered you know, right. point of contact. The, the property ownership would not necessarily need to be with the town. It could be with any third party leasing the land. Would there be, I, I mean, would we want to encourage it to be with the town because then we would have the additional savings of payment on a lease per if, se? Yeah, if you that? had a location that was suitable, okay. yeah. if, if the town of Putney had a location that was suitable, then you would have the extra income of a lease. Um, but there really isn't many locations in Putney for a system of this for, size. Of this size. Yeah, we, we, we did a 50 kilowatt system RFP to sort of keep it small, we knew we could fit that very easily along the northern section of the field at the town garage. But a 250 kilowatt system or a 500 kilowatt gonna, system takes over the whole field right. and you run into shading issues all along all the edges. Yeah. Um, so it wouldn't even fit. So realistically the town does not have an open space for that much solar. And you know, there are liability issues, there are maintenance issues. You, you, you pro I'm, I'm recommending at this point that you don't go with ownership that you look at these other models that, that investors have come in and um, basically done all the heavy lifting, and install the system, they provide the maintenance, and, and all you're buying is power. Then at the end of 10 years, you have the option to buy the system at, at, a, at a going rate. They can't quote you uh, a really low rate. There's federal regulations against like quoting the system for really cheap, but it will be used at that point and it will be very affordable. So for after 10 years or after 20 years when you have the option to buy and you'll have to see how that plays out in each RFP, I would probably make the recommendation that the town consider a purchase because it would be pennies on the dollar and you'd, still, and you'd be able to utilize that infrastructure going forward. Now, if it's on a, a third party parcel, that does add a ring right, to it. Right. Yeah. Yes. And you'd end up paying the lease fee on that parcel as well as any maintenance that might come up. Right. But that's down the line. But is, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, say you buy it out in 10 or 20 years, mm -hmm. isn't the technology advancing so rapidly that in 10 or 20 years it's going to be obsolete, that well, type of a system? Yes and no. Uh, uh, PV panels are warranted for a minimum of 20 years. They mm -hmm. will, and they will be producing at least 80% of their capacity at 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, 
At 30 years, you'll probably see 70% of their capacity. So you may want to consider replacing the panels, you know, um, but you'll still have the wiring will be in place, the poles will be in place, all the racking will be there, the inverters will be in place, the permitting is all set. So replacing your panels at that point, at the rate that panel cost is dropping, might make sense in 20, 10 or 20 years. So, so the answer is yes and no. I mean, it really depends on how your system is performing. Mm -hmm. Whether it, there's enough excess, you know, versus how much you want to spend to to improve its efficiency. But panels are very robust. You could, there are panels that are 50 years old that are still producing, you know, 60, 80 percent of their power. And I guess if the if the you know system is cheap enough at that point, even if it's not state of the art, it's still probably mm -hmm. worth. Right. It's running. used, and it's going to be an attractive rate. You know, it's, you're going to know. Uh, what the rate is in the RFP, right? But I think they just can't—they can't sell it to you for a dollar. It has to be a market value. And if we just did a, pur a power purchase agreement, there would be no upfront cost for us at right. all. Is that exactly. correct? So you would okay. start saving electricity day one. Right. Uh, start saving sorry, money. Start for saving money day one. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So it's—it's it's a very interesting kind of. The, the game is changing statewide. And it's mm -hmm. mostly just tax shelter. Reasons well, that people the are. reason this is happening in Vermont is Vermont is one of, I think, seven states, maybe, I, I mean, I have the number correct, that allow third-party power purchase agreements. Uh, there are states where there's a lot of money, but those states don't all allow power purchase agreements. So, so money is being funneled into states that do in order to get these systems built in, in, a, in a fairly quick timeline because in two or three years, Politics may change. Who knows what? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a specific law that allows third-party power purchase agreements to, to be in effect mm -hmm. with municipalities, schools, businesses, anyone. So it's a very interesting point in time that we find ourselves at because you're going to see a lot of big systems go in, or mid-sized systems go in in, in all of Vermont. It's good. Good. Yeah, it's very good. Um, do you have questions specific to this RFP? I have feedback from the attorney. <laughs> if you guys want me to tell you that right now. Um, one of his questions was if we, in, in this particular proposal right now, there isn't anything about a performance bond requirement. Um, so he asked if we wanted to add that, which I'm thinking we probably should. Which, what exactly does that mean? That they have to satisfactorily complete the project? Yeah. Even if it's a power purchase agreement, we would want yeah, that? I think Do you that's know, a very Daniel? good point. The, the problem inherent in having these three different types oh, of bids is that it's not really our specific. It, it may not be, yeah, the, we may want to say that they, they agree to deliver power at a certain, you know, within a certain time frame. But since it's not a project that's being built, for the town necessarily, uh, or on town property, it would be hard to to sort of have a, a performance bond that, yeah. that actually had performance related right. you, you need two parties. triggers. You need two parties in effect to yeah. have a performance right. bond. Well, presumably inherent in the contract for that would be, I mean, I would think, you know, how this plays out as far as a performance bond is concerned, mm -hmm. but would the, they would provide us with a minimum of X amount of kilowatts per year. That would go in a contract. Right, right, exactly. So, once, so that's once the town sort looks of at the same, I don't know. Right, so or, once the town looks at several proposals and decides on one, then a contract is created right. where the, the town signs up for X number of kilowatts per month. And right. at that point, I think there there could be some kind of bonding, or and so, I'm not an expert in this, so you know again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but I guess well, my the question bonding issue is to to avoid you know an issue like they have had in Rockingham. With well, I'm sure power. that's why he's exactly. there. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> but I guess right. my well, I guess the thing is is then so should we be requiring them to carry in workers' comp insurance and all that stuff if it's not our project? They would probably, well, well is there federal money involved? or it's right under here under cover no. insurance requirements. Well, yes, there is federal money, but it's, it's not. It's tax, it's tax incentive, it's not federal, like, grant money. There's no grant money involved. Right. It's, tax, it's all tax incentive, and Because that would be, if there was federal money 
Right, but there's a page in here about insurance. Right. That's why I'm asking. Right. No. In know, effect, we could probably we could enter into uh, like this number two with one of these the, the folks with the, the two projects were brought to us. Right. So we could you actually? You know, in, in effect, just to simplify. Yeah. I mean, I'm, no. not, I'm not trying to over simplify. No, no, it, it's I'm totally true. Uh, any number of so local projects. Essentially, any are, private developer, as yeah. it were, of a private of a. Solar, you know, yes. gets the property, gets the, yeah. the system. When I originally created uh -huh. this, it was for a system that gets sure. installed right. on, on town, some property. town property. So yeah. what I did was I, I changed the front Tailored page. Yeah. I went through it and made sure that it sort of made sense. But I, I left in everything from the other yeah. proposal about, you know, uh, the developer sort of proving their worth, you know, tax return and then how many systems they put in and this and that. The town can waive any of this. I was going to say, I mean, can, do, do we, and, and are we committed to putting in a system at all? I mean, what no. if we get seven numbers back and all of them we go, you know, whoa, this is crazy. We don't want to do this. You no, know? there's no commitment. No, okay. well, it's just an RFP. Well, it's not efficient. like an RFP right. for, but there a, for is a municipal some language project. Because that, that, that was my question. Okay. Because I was concerned about that. And there was some language in here that, that made the lawyer uncomfortable, which... And it, it was on. <laughs> um, yeah, because you know, like if you take the the sidewalk right project for example, mm -hmm. we put an RFP out for that. Then we're required to accept, but there's grant money involved in that. But once that, once we get bids back, we're required to accept it unless there's the lowest bid, unless there's a, a reason not to. But right. that's not. Right. It's a so, different uh, scenario. Uh, I just right, want to make right. sure we're well, in, in, in a way where you can write. On page three under contract for work, it says after meeting with the best right. of three contractors, a contract for the installation of a PV system will be signed right. between. Mm -hmm. So the that will might just be changed to change May that. or yeah, something. That's a great idea. I approve. Not that you asked. <laughs> um, I, I mean, that. down below it did say that we. we have the right to waive any of in, in bidding and mm -hmm. to reject any bid. So it was kind of a conflict for yes. that was no, just so that's, well. that's a good thing for the lawyer to have pointed out. And one thing I did add, uh, after talking with several installers, is that it, there's a clause here that, that probably should be in the contract, but it's in the contract for work section, uh, also on page three, where it says installers must begin work on the project no later than 30 days where the contract is automatically canceled. What this means is that if you go with a certain bid, and that bidder is delaying for any number of tactics the project, then you're not beholden the past 30 days to remain with that Stay bidder. with that person. Right. right. So it's more relevant if you have a project that you're hiring someone to install for you and you're buying equipment. But it still applies. Well, we might then want to change that also instead of saying, or the contract will automatically be canceled to, um, installers must begin work on the project no later than 30 days, or the town has the option to cancel. Great. Yeah, that's great, sure. Can I chime in on something? Mm -hmm. um, there could be a beginning and an ending date, so that it's completed by a certain date. There too. is a beginning and ending date. Yeah. Okay, and well, the ending date is 150 that. days after the after the rip of the right. bid. And the beginning, the beginning is within 30 is, days. Right. And the other thing is, uh, there has to be a certificate of public. Well, good. that's one of the things I was going to say. Is I was reading some things today. One of them was somebody sent me like a PowerPoint presentation, a solar, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they were saying that it's a six-month time period just for the permitting process. Is that true? But there can be delays in the permitting yeah. process, especially for larger installations. Yeah. Yes. But so, it also depend. I think that would depend on who. I mean, you may have a contractor, you know, wherever in Westminster or somewhere, who already has the permit, already has everything all set to go. I mean, I don't, I don't know, well, I don't know whether they're chicken and egg wise. I don't know yeah. how this well, works. Well, let's take but the 50 kilowatt system as an example. So, you put this out to bid, and you get three bids back, and you like one of them because they they promise to take care of all the maintenance for. 20 years, and um, it seems like the way to go. The town would have to come up with money for this kind of system. Um, but the, a 50 kilowatt system is much easier to, to do permitting on. Right. Anything under 250 kilowatts is fairly straightforward. And so the, the developer would then turn to you and say, 
there's a 60 day window for permitting. We'll get started within 30 days and After. we'll have your permit. Yeah. Right. And, and the town would have to negotiate that in the contract state. Right. So the RFP, what I wrote, is really just guidelines mm -hmm. for, you know, I don't think that this is the contract. It is just what no, the is I don't. Out. No, I and, and if you get three developers coming back to you and saying your you know your your timeline your wording off, is not possible, then right? We'll right. Have learned something in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, then. Yeah. I mean, then maybe there's just a clause in there about allowance for time for permitting, or you know, however we need to do that too. But not know. in this, in the contract. Well, or in maybe the in the RFP to say, you know whatever reasonable time will be allowed for permitting. You know, I don't know how we might word that or whether we want it in here, I'm not sure. On page four, there is a section down near the bottom that says, handle all certificates and CPGs and any required permitting necessary for installation. Right. So you may want to elaborate on that, you know, let say within a reasonable time frame or within an agreeable time frame or whatever you want to have in there. Provide written lease for non town owned lands. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, CPG means uh, you should always put right, in, right. do in parentheses yep. what they would actually mean. Right. <laughs> this is my first RFP, so <laughs> bear with me if I've made a few errors. What does what is CPG? Certificate, certificate of Public Good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you. So, can we just go back to the performance bond again? I'm not, I'm not clear whether we should put it in here or not. I don't, I guess. I think it depends on the nature. I, you know, I mean, maybe what we should put in there is, <coughs> I think know, maybe if it came to a contractual arrangement, right, but it I guess certainly I'm, be in there. I guess I'm confused be in, why we're putting in other insurance requirements in this RFP if we don't think we should put the, the I mean, because, right. because, because, right. because that because will, that none, will of, none of this is germane until such time as the actual, the right, the, the, you're accepting a, you know, you, this is in effect like doing the, the engineering before the sidewalk, yeah. <laughs> you know, and getting that concept squared away, you know, and well, I didn't invent this RFP. I did the actually lift it well, from the Javro co-op RFP, yeah. 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 and so yeah. there was a lot of this wording already in there, and we tailored it for a 50 kW project, right. and then, and in, you know. Anything you want to take out is fine. Um, well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to take anything out. I mean, I think that maybe on here it needs to say insurance requirements if it's a exactly. If it's no, a that's what I was going to say. For the if the, if sure, there is to be if there is to be right. if we're, yeah. we're, we're we're doing that. But say we were going into the like this leasing arrangement or whatnot, mm -hmm. well, this would be, then it would not then be, it would, be, right, then, yeah. then it's a good point. Way. Well, maybe what it should say is something along the lines of, you know, depending on the agreement or depending on the scope of the work, right. you know, Nature. X, Y, and Z would be possible requirements, potential requirements of the final contract or something like yeah. that, right. you know, so that, so that it's clear so that we're going to do that at some right. point, even if it's okay. not right up front, because the Brattleboro Co-op one was for an actual physical system. On their roof. Right, exactly. So they needed so insurance. They needed and, and, yes, right, and I'm not even point. sure, even with any of these, would we be the ones that are hiring the contractor? Or would the, I mean, because we're not, we are certainly not going to be hiring a contractor we're not build, to put We a are, in effect, not building You can't be the chief. Yeah, well, these are, this, this <laughs> is... I can't even put a chemical feed building up without worrying. <laughs> my recommendation is the town doesn't get into the power generation business. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's uh, there's a lot of expense. Well, and, so and, and, and there's not a lot that. of incentive right now. I mean, right. that, your that. incentive went away on January. Exactly. Yeah. So, so then maybe we should take the insurance requirement right out of there, because we're not the. Uh, but, in any but, of these but, scenarios, we're not going to be the one that. Well, proving that they have insurance is good. If if it's a system that's on our property, I don't know. I you know I guess I guess the clause that could be in there or the statement could be that in there would be as simple as you know if an agreement is entered upon, all the appropriate insurances would be required, including performance well, bonds, liability. Exactly. Exactly. This contract, exactly. This contract, bidders will provide. So, exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, so it is stated already in there. Yeah. Who are we hiring? We're hiring an ins 
I don't well, know. Depends I guess on it the depends system. on the system. No, that's a really good question because what <laughs> right. you have now is you have companies that design and and um, they design and, and and put together projects. Uh, there's a three-letter an acronym I it, right over my head. Um, they basically design and hire the installers to put these systems together, and they work with finance. They work with investors, and so they're right, basically not yeah, doing the hard work. Right. Right. But, but so you you actually might be working with bid would be probably be important. Yes. You would be because they're telling you one thing. We'll and figure out a way to put all this else. in here so that at least it's there. Right. Right. I mean, I think you know. And then if it's not required, as you said, you followed basically some some fairly straightforward boilerplate which is not for the same arrangements, system. which you know it's not a one one shoot fits all. Right. Necessary, but it does cover a lot of. And I did not go history. through the whole document for to like realign it to these new sure. three sure. projects. I, I once Which I realized also, we I were mean, out of since it's all evolving so quickly, you know, it may be hard to sort of predict what that RFP looks like. And it's but. you know, if you have a clause in there, and the installers or the you know the entrepreneur comes back to you and says this doesn't make sense. Right. Right. So You're not not how about this? Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, then you you may in fact be approached with something other than these three. You know. Well, it's going to be something. Well, right. It's yeah. going to yeah. fall into yeah. one of these three. This, there's a lot of similarities. But well, I'm saying that you know, if they come back and they say, well, your insurance requirements are kind of not appropriate. Right. You know, not applicable. Then town says, okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll call Richard again and explain to him the difference, the difference yeah. between, you know, what, because he may not, by reading this, he hasn't heard this whole discussion, he may not, he may think we're putting in this. Right. That we're actually purchasing the system and, I mean, he may not be familiar with it, so I'll, and then I'll ask him if it's appropriate to put that in there. Because I don't, I want him to tell me, I don't want a vendor to come in and tell me that our insurance requirements are not appropriate. Right. Mm. I want to make sure that we, right. yeah. No. I, I, think, I, mean, I think we just have to have it stated in there, which, it, which it, I mean, Scott's yeah. right. It's submit a certificate of insurance. Uh, you know, if awarded this, con you know, maybe we just need to elaborate on that section a little bit or something yeah. so that it's clear. But no, I think you're right. I don't, you know, if we're, if we're doing a power purchase agreement, then the somebody's insurance, liability insurance the liability for the is on the, doesn't have anything to do with us. Well, I'm curious, what are you, do you, how familiar are you with Zyder's Community Solar Project? Well, Community Solar is another model. So we have direct ownership. We have ownership on lease land. We have this new net metering thing where you can buy power through the grid from anywhere in mm -hmm. Vermont, essentially, at this point, um, through a power purchase agreement or a solar lease. Then we have Community Solar, which is based on net metering rules that went into effect a few years ago where any number of people who have Green Mountain Power uh, meters can purchase solar uh, uh, from a, a solar installation mm -hmm. and power uh, credits are, are put onto their bill in, in the proportion that they invested into the system. Isn't that what this is doing, essentially? Well, they're probably buying using it. the same net metered uh, concept uh, rules yeah. mm -hmm. that, that Green Mountain Power needs to adhere to. Uh, the difference is that, well, for instance, if, if the town went with uh, Company A and Company A offered a uh, 250 kilowatts uh, system, which generates, I don't know, uh, a, a megawatt a day, actually, mm -hmm. uh, four hours of sunlight and so on and so forth, um, and the town needed all that power, um, the, 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 your meter would essentially be credited, your account would essentially be credited the amount of electricity generated by that system. Um, but they credit you at uh, something close to 20 cents a kilowatt. And the agreement that you make with the company that's put in the system states that you would actually only receive 18 cents a kilowatt. Or, or, or you would only receive uh, 12 cents a kilowatt and they would and receive they the, the rest. Right. And that's where they make some of their money. Right. So okay. it's different than a group net meter system because there's none of that playing around with the adder. Right. You, the, the group I guess net meter, everyone in the group net meter gets the, ad, the full adder that's right. available, as long as it's available. But other contracts with municipalities and whatnot may be, may be laid out differently. Yeah, and, and that again, I guess what I'm kind of also getting to is if I, if I invested in the community solar thing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't need insurance, would I? No. I wouldn't need, I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Why, right. why, why would we need anything? We wouldn't, I think. In theory, we form. wouldn't. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. On the other hand, if you have a contract that's, that means some kind of performance, 
bond or something might be reasonable because you're essentially re requiring the system to produce a certain Excellent. amount of electricity. Right. If it doesn't, the lights don't go out because it's still it's connected still to the grid. Right. But you right. see the discrepancy on a bill at right. some point, and right. then you, you have to wonder what's going on. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, the, whether that's a performance, not a performance bond for per se, for work or construction, it's no. more of a performance it's a, of our agreement. It's a performance agreement, yeah. Or whatever. So, I don't even know if they have all that. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 So, but that's a good point. That you, as for community solar, for some minute, when you're buying into a system, you wouldn't need that. And in fact, several installers are now offering group net metered options for businesses in the area. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's no insurance that goes along with that. Just you, you're basically just signing up, and you, um, I'm not even sure if you pay in advance or what. But if you're looking to make some money, you know, I mean, that could be a pretty good scam. <laughs> have you, you're part of the community solar thing? Have you gotten your insurance yet? <laughs> Let me say, yeah. <laughs> what happens if the community solar site is <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> have you explored this yet? Okay. So there are some other small, I mean, he, Richard pointed out just some other small. I'm happy to help with that. If, Nothing. If Richard wants to hear my thoughts or have some specific okay. questions, um, I'm available for that kind of uh, stuff. Oh, cool. this, he did circle that. He says, what is this? Uh, it was, uh, well, this was when I did the system uh, as an RFP for 50 kilowatts, but you could always put numbers in front of that or numbers behind it, maybe so it, so 250 or 500. So really it should just be blank. It could be blank, sure. Okay. Yeah, I think what you ultimately want is to you're at, have you're, the town be net zero, at, you know, in terms of its electric mm -hmm. potential right. use of the grid, and right. so that all your electricity is being generated by a system, and the town then has bragging rights and is saving money on 100 percent of its electric use. Right. And uh, so that you'd you'd want to basically purchase a system that's appropriately sized, whether that's. 150 or 250. I, I so we answer. just need to find that. I mean, we, we it's easy well, I think, but on this, it's just them filling in the size system that they're proposing. That's true, but right? they may they may come to you and say, "How much electricity are you using?" Well, and that we might want to clarify in the request. I mean, if we know how much we need, it, you know, a minimum right. of. Right. Although we're going to want to know that. Yeah. 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 No. That's but, probably you know, the only problem with that is that if for X company a 50 watt system is a or 50 kilowatt. kilowatt system is a is a huge benefit to them, but a hundred isn't, and we're requiring 75, we may be mixing people. So, you know. Well, there's 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 another alternative where if you're only doing a power purchase agreement, they may build a 500 kilowatt system and three towns may decide to purchase, purchase any power. part of it. Yeah, right. so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, as if, you know, I wouldn't worry about the excess power being generated by a system because someone's gonna buy it. Uh, it may not all go to the one Right, time. no, I'm not worried about it. But basically what I'm saying is that we would wanna require a minimum. I mean, if we wanna right. be net zero yeah. and we use, yeah. you know, X number of kilowatts, yeah. then we want the system to be at least right. So under system capacity on page eight, eight, you would probably want to list the minimum that the town would need. Right, and then well, beyond we that, it you. doesn't really matter to us the size. Right, I don't think. Right. Rather than fifty kilowatts. Right, but not the front. We've got the town putting listing bids for a fifty to two fifty. So we would take away that we range would, right. for a minimum of X Good kilowatt point. system. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and we could figure that out shortly right. in the back room. Right. It's well, I wrote down how many kilowatt hours we used in fiscal year 12. For the whole year? For the whole year. Okay. And? 259,401. 250 megawatts. 250 megawatts. Out of curiosity, what? what? I took that from the bills. When so, you say the town. Uh, uh, we have 11 different everything. electric okay, bills, so, so it's everything. So the fire department, yep. the library, library the lot, yes. wastewater, this building. Town yeah. garage, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So All the pump station. I yeah. actually wrote down yeah. some calculations, as I thought you might ask. Um, a, so let's see, um, a 250 kilowatt system produces 365 megawatt hours a year. So what did you say? So that would be more. 259. 259. So you're talking under a 250 kilowatt system, probably something like 
150 to 200. Roughly 200. Yeah. yeah. But again, you may only be seeking a power purchase agreement for what you need, and the developer then has to right, put which together is fine. a project. But, 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 but you know, if we're going for that net metering, right, right, if we should have that zero number. thing, then. Absolutely. So then, should it say on this first page? No, you should do the math yes. with Daniel or okay, somebody else. Okay, so you and I will work on this sure, part. Yes. Make sure. Okay. So it doesn't look like we're going to take any action on this today. We're just going to, no, you're going to revamp so, it. Yeah, which, which changed the timeline, I guess, <coughs> which is fine. You know, I don't know, but you know what it is. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's this placeholder timeline. Right. Yeah. Anyway, is it this one? One of these had February 30th in them. Is oh, it this one? Yeah, that's it? not. Oh, that's the other one? That's the other okay. one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, the, the, the RFP committee met many times and worked very hard to put together an RFP that became obsolete on February se on January 2nd, and it was, I didn't even want to break the news to them, but, you know, no, they, they did a good job, and, and it was a labor of love. There you go. Okay. So we're, we'll work on, on it together. Great. And, um... Thank you all for your well thought out questions. And oh, look, I did A, B, C, C. D. We have two C's. Sorry. Oh. No wonder I couldn't figure out yeah, what we were. Yeah, we were about. all out of yeah. sync, weren't you? Um, but D is still for liquor license renewals. Yeah, so. this is the list. Here's the and I don't know how you, if you guys have in the past, just we will. What we did was we listed all of the <coughs> licenses that are for renewal, if they owed any money to us. <laughs> D and J market is what? Oh, general store. It's a general store. It is. Okay. Um, the ones that owe the smaller amount, they. This may be here, this payment, I don't know. It just may not be posted yet, so. But this is not actually the pizza place that uh, owes that, that's, so. That's, um, yeah. 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 Hmm, that's a problem. That falls under that question we had just recently as to. Shutting off utilities. Yeah. yeah but when there's a tenant in the building, yeah. Which we're not shutting off utilities, but do you penalize him and not renew his liquor license because the landlord is? No, I don't think you. I mean, that I wouldn't want to do it. Not, but we have to figure out how to. Is Neil behind on other utilities also around town, or is that? Yes. He is. I had the pleasure of doing some computer work for Neil in a freezing cold room. That is. Where the utilities have been shut off. <laughs> we, well, the oil had been. Let's just say that there was no heat. He was conserving. He was. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then uh, each one of them needs to be signed tough. over under the approved. Out of once you them. approve them all. Oh, if you approve them all. Sorry. Neil may be out of town as well, so I don't know if that. Yeah, it takes, taxes it takes a little bit longer than that to. Oh, okay. Um, right, so if we do, I mean, I suppose we can probably go ahead and approve all of the ones without a question on them, and then we want to decide what we're... Yeah, you're not concerned about these little ones. The small, I, right, you don't know if that uh, payment... Let's put it this way, though. In the utility department, as far as water, taxes are paid up. The utilities, water, is it sewer too? Yeah. I have not made a huge effort to collect those right now. On this one yes. we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, I haven't made a call to him. I haven't. So. No, but it's certainly not. I mean, I, it's certainly not legitimate. Yeah, this is sort of, they're, they're sort of right. two different discussions. They're two different discussions. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't want to. Down. Right. We do no, have the we ability. Have Air Hunt should not be penalized right. because. To pay right. the no, that's the way I think definitely. about it, but. No, I agree. Uh, there I think will be we a, all agree on that. Yeah. What is that? I'm curious. What does that represent? That's how, how much time? Six hours? 
years. Yeah. years. Wow. Okay. We have a few that are like that, and we yeah, need yeah. to make a really. We need to. That is not always been a priority of collection. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna make some efforts in the next six months so to. We got a new sheriff in town, though, so. Mm -hmm. I hear she's tough. I know. <laughs> you should have seen my letter for delinquent tax. It's like I don't want, really don't want to sell your house. Please come in and talk to me. That's right. We need that twelve dollars and forty cents. <laughs> Please don't make me sell your property. Um, <laughs> That's not what I want to oh, do. Oh, I see. Okay, the taxes, town, town taxes. Right. Okay. okay. And basically, as part of this process, we do mm -hmm. have the right if they owe taxes and utilities not to approve. Right. A liquor license. A liquor license. We did that. So we we can we, we did that. We, we delayed a couple years right. ago we because of a yeah. circumstance. Yeah. But um, so I wanted to we wanted to make you aware of that, but also felt the same. I feel the same way you do as far as that one goes. So we just no. gotta chase them down for that utility. I mean, Wait, what? I'm, I'm again curious. Uh, is one of these McClements? Yeah, Jasmac. Jasmac. Okay. Let's see. Okay. And there are two of them that are just tobacco. Is that what you mm -hmm. said? So it's not. So it should read when you do the. It's liquor license and tobacco. Tobacco, not in balls and DJ. Okay. okay. All right. So you need all of us to sign. I don't remember how we do. That. I thought we that's just approved them and then they get handed over. That's there what Denise to, told me. Is that uh, there's 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 a C on the yeah, on the left yeah, hand did, side? We did have to sign them all. So I'll move that we uh, accept the renewal of There's three the, lines down there. Uh, liquor license renewals as presented. Uh, yep, I second it. Um, it has been moved and seconded to approve liquor licenses and tobacco license for the listed organizations. Um, if there is no further discussion. Then all in favor, say aye. 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 I'm not sure we do need to yeah, sign this. Yeah. I think, okay. uh, hang on a second. Sunoco is Dumberston, right? Yes. Okay. Is that what she told you? She pointed out to me where they yeah, needed to sign. Yeah. I thought I thought I needed just the things, but I mean. Uh, I mean, we can sign it, it doesn't really matter. Approved by the Board of Control Commissioners. Because. I think it's gone right? both ways. I think Anita sent them in before we got. I think so signature. too. But, I don't I mean, think she, she I don't took think we the time to, to fold them over and so that. Well, I mean, Denise put them together today because yeah. Anita was sick. So maybe, I mean, Denise came in. She and may told not me. realize. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can't hurt to sign it, I guess. Keep it short. Bible system. 
Yeah, I knew that it was going cheap on eBay. <laughs> a bit about the values that are being placed on solar arrays. Um, the state is, of course, going to have us um, place values. They are going to be placed on kilowatt hours that are output, not so much the structure. Um, for towns that do inventory, it certainly will be another cost. But I don't know that Putney would benefit so much from that. Um, at this point, the two people who are most involved in setting up the system and the software for doing the, the specs for the kilowatt hours, I, I talked to both of them today, and they told me the best way for me to look at it is a dollar, you know, 160 per kilowatt hour to $3 per kilowatt hour is as the a value. As per a, kilowatt hour, hour of the capacity of the system is right. That, okay. Right. Okay. Now the other things that are going to factor in kilowatt. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, let me finish. Yes, and then, please finish. Okay, great. Right. So um, there's because the terms are being decided on by the state, um, they're not really sure yet how it's going to work. The factors that we have to consider are whether or not they are um, movable. Most of them that are just going to be on one axis will have a whole different system to give them a value than the ones that move. Because they'll have more value because potentially they can collect more solar power and more output. So it really is going to be based on the output. So. The software is being designed now. When they finish it, I'm sure that they're going to give us yet another tab to pull down and another way to measure. And um, that that is right around the corner. I mean, they're working heavily on it because it's another it's another source of revenue and it's another value that we will be placed on it. There's a workshop coming up that I'm signed up for on the 8th and 9th of this month that is primarily about this. So I got to talk to both of the guys um, yesterday and today, and that's what I got out of it so far. But I'll have more information for you by, by mid-April. I mean, certainly after I attend the workshop, which promises to be uh, enlightening and grueling at the same moment. I of curiosity, does this just pertain to solar setups that are grid-tied? Or is this anything? This is going to be just grid tied ones. Okay. But without doubt, once they figure out a system for placing values, it'll mm -hmm. just be a matter of time before any solar panel that produces any amount of power can fall in, into the same, possibly at a different rate of value, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and as I said, the towns that have inventory, that's another hole. Ball game, you know, we we don't. So you mean personal? Are you talking about like personal, personal property, property okay. and inventory? Because because how they determine what that is on solar arrays mm -hmm. um, is still up in the air. Like I said, in in April, I'm sure that after the two day workshop, I'll know Everything. much more that I can come and share with. You. It's a but it is system a, in flux. But it is a changing market also, and so the state is also doing a little bit of a hurry up and wait thing. Because they want to see, you know, like they want to promote them, but they also want to be able to place a value based on market value. Right. And, and the truth is, is we don't have enough data to prove what market value is. And since the lister's job is to always create highest and best use for property, whatever that means, parcels and property, I'm wondering what's going to happen to the actual land that the solar arrays are placed on. Highest and best use is, is, is a wide variety for a big right. open flat field right. in Vermont. You know, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a, it usually promotes a pretty handsome value. So, I mean, as opposed to a cliff. Not that they couldn't be put on a cliff, but that's mm -hmm. another thing to consider. So, so I think the state is just looking at them as, as output and 
how to place a value on just their maximum output. And since RFPs are going out all over the state saying that they will produce X amount of power, that's actual hard data that they can then say, okay, this is what you're saying, you, you can output, so this is what we're going to place our value on. So, any questions? No, I, I'm kind of just out of curiosity, too. Um, if someone were to have a bunch of solar up somewhere, could they use that as a current use? Well, so to put now, the land into current use? Now, current use is another, another thing altogether. Current use is taken almost on a case-by-case -case basis. But, for example, if you have a cell tower, mm -hmm. right, on property that's in current use, um, they have to take that out of current use. It's taxable. It's yeah. taxable at another at another yeah, rate. I would have to guess that. I, 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 I would too. suspect I don't that's know. probably the, the model closest to what you know. Right. The, Although the having to follow. Although current use is also undergoing some changes right sure. now. The way that it works is a forestry map has to be done every ten years. Right? So if your land is in under the forestry, there's every 10 years. If it's under ag land, there isn't the same kind of filter that uh, you go through. But they rely on the listers because let's say you have a barn and um, burns down. They don't necessarily know. They expect us to let them know, you know, so that the state isn't paying tax on a building that's not there. Or you could have a farm where uh, the cows all die and the farmer doesn't replace them. Well, that should be pulled out of current use. Is mm -hmm. it still ag land? Yes. Is that building part of it? But if it's not productive, then it shouldn't be in current then it, use. Then it has to be pulled out. Right. So because they're undergoing this kind of hurry up and examine everything, the solar stuff is definitely going to end up being part of that current use wave. Of, of examination, because if it goes the way of cell towers, then it will be pulled out of current use, mm -hmm. but on a case-by-case -case basis. And sometimes um, with cell towers, it's like the, the actual square footage land it's on. Um, I know that when domiciles, you know, when somebody's home, um, each time they have a home, rather for every home that's on a parcel, that's in current use, two acres is, is automatically omitted. So if you have three homes, three different houses, livable houses on your land, six acres is taken out of current use, not two. Right. Right, because, because the way that we do it with most values is that your home and all of your outbuildings or all of your buildings are taken and put on that two acres. If, if there are two houses, then they're both considered part of that two-acre parcel, mm -hmm. not so with current use. Mm -hmm. And also with current use, sometimes you have a building way further afield than those two or six acres. So, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's, it's a little bit murkier. Mm -hmm. And I know that the solar arrays will murk it up further. But. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't have your, I don't want to interrupt in your agenda, I don't have a copy of it, um, but as your town energy coordinator, I do notice some issues with this application from Sovereign for the Baskerville um, project. I don't know if it's appropriate to talk about that at this meeting or if there's some venue. Issues that we should be aware of? Yeah, or that? yeah um, I'm, I'm section 8 here in the environmental information. We don't have a copy of this. Uh, no, that was what we yeah. talked about. Yeah, but I am. So, uh, well, I we don't. We don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure we need a copy. But. Okay, I could read it to you if you like. Um, but what's the issue? Well, the issue is it's um, it isn't necessarily factually correct. So, if they're coming before the town and the town is one of the, so so to speak, abutters, and that they're seeking approval, then the environmental information should be factually correct. Uh, it says here that uh, it says uh, 
State whether the system will be sited on or near within any of the following. Answer yes or no. A floodway. Right. My, uh, my understanding of a floodway is a floodplain. Is that correct? And it says no here. Yeah, um, we talked about that. Did that question the other day? Shoreline, stream, wetland, no. So these four no's are possibly incorrect. And I just think that it's is apparently it? not in the floodplain, is what well, they said, I, but I don't. I, as far as I, I'm as sure it is in the floodplain because I've been looking at the, the map and I know from previous work with this property. That's sort of what I thought too. But the floodplain mm -hmm. is bisecting at least four well, of the this is, array, proposed array locations. Where is, where is the flood All right, FEMA well, map? All right, well, this is. Um, I don't. I may not have that with me because I This is the lot we're talking about, or right. that Daniel was referring to. Um, now, this line isn't um, isn't accurate anymore because um, it actually goes up and over this way now. But um, these lines here are contours so that you right. can see elevation, and this is actually physically where the building is and where the road is. Where the contours are. Right. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that they're talking about putting it in here. What? But I think Daniel might be referring to the property line. Pictorial pictorial of, of where they're putting it? Yeah. Right. So it's so in here. They're, yeah. They're, they're going to put arrays in right here. And um, so that's, other than the, the major problem of having your array right next to a very large hill, the, the array straddles the what I understand is the the 50 year, 100 year flood, flood plane. Um, so I just want to be clear, I'm, you know, I'm just weighing in so that everyone understands the facts. I'm not trying to say bad projects or anything like that. I think it's, it's great to see solar going in anywhere. Um, they, Sovereign may also not be aware of the parcel change and the way that what they're doing is they're building their arrays both south of this line, but the, the actual perfect location is right up here for arrays because the way this hillside creates shadow, shadow. it's yeah. going to, you know, someone's going to be on the short end of that shadow and it's probably well, going to be the owner of the property. So, <laughs> Well, this is, this is the area that you're just referring to and these yes. are the contour lines. Yes. So, what I'm saying that the new property boundary is up here and right. it's this area that is the perfect location for a large solar installation. So Everything this area else is going to get shadow, shadow detail. Yeah. But I'm not concerned about shadow as much as I'm concerned about floodplain and accuracy in the reporting on the environmental section. So but we did ask about that. And they said that they would be up high enough, wasn't that? Yeah. That they'd be up high enough. And that and they're that rated for concrete and, and oh, sure. the only things. But they on. did say that it wasn't. But you're right. I mean, if oh, they're yeah. answering the question, they, they were. They, mm -hmm. the, the, the installation will be robust enough to right. withstand um, some flooding. There's, there's no question about that. I'm just concerned that what I'm seeing are, are incorrect answers. And oh, I think I that should be addressed. You know, it is in a floodplain. It is near shoreline. There's a stream. It's a wetland. It may be possibly historic. I can't have, answer all of I don't. Have you been through the, the public service board? Has anybody? I don't know what that process is like. Do they have to go sit before the board and, and answer? You mean the certificate um, of the public CPG, good? Yeah. They, yeah, or is it just... I think if no one raises a red flag, the CPG goes through. But since this is near uh, wetlands, I think there are further considerations that come into play. So saying, no, there's no wetlands here, you know, may or may not be the right answer. Uh, See, in effect, it's going to affect insurance for them, for whoever owns it. Oh, it's going to affect how quickly they can be more. It's going to be more or unavailable. It affects this permitting. Is, the, and yeah, permitting yeah, process. It's, 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 uh, uh, no, I know. I've uh, seen all that. And we asked, they asked that question at the last meeting about the flood, flood plane. Right. And she assured us that the, that the as far as the FEMA maps, which I didn't check. Well, so we probably should check. I, I mean, I guess, it, I guess is this an issue that we should be... In, I mean, I, well, I understand they're that, going through a permitting process, right? So, and I, these questions are going to be put to them in that permitting right. process. Well, except if they have not answered rightfully on their application, right. I think that's Daniel's qualm with it, which is which is yeah, understandable. I'm totally for solar, and it's not a matter of who's applying. I just I just happen to look at this because 
in I'm interested in solar, and, right. I, and particularly I'm interested in this parcel because I did a site assessment right at this point right. after the new parcel adjustment had been made. And this is a, a stellar location because the sun rises here, and then by the time it clears the hill, it's high enough that there's no shading. But if you start putting solar panels, and again, this is not my business where they put their panels, but if you start putting them down there and part of them are shaded, it's not going to be a very profitable solar installation. Right. So if the town is then being right. approached well, by, yeah, that, by an installer for a power purchase agreement, that might impact the relationship a little bit or the performance. I don't think we are going to be approached. Okay. That's uh, this, another, is, this, is, this is Greg right. providing for yeah, his store. In this case, if Greg wants to install panels in the, in the shade, right. that's really up to him. Right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's no there's no reason why he couldn't do that other than the power output would be exceedingly lower. Reduced. Right. Yes. Um, so that was just a mock-up that I made um, um, several months ago as part of a feasibility study that the National Renewable Energy Labs was putting together. Uh, ostensibly for a combined heat and power plant. Right. And no, and, and that, I'm just showing you. I mean, we walked all the way back. Right? I yes. remember you had your yes. thing out right yes. back there where we were looking at yes. it. I so. beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Straight out my technical, technical device. Out. <laughs> yes, you did. See, it does get fun here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but again, my, where I place those would also be in the floodplain, and I'm not saying that my proposal is any better, and I'm certainly not funding this, so I don't have any say in the matter. Right. No, and I and I'm not sure we have any say in the placement, but in the in the accuracy of the application, right. Right. that's true. I mean, you know, I guess maybe. I can Maybe you should look at the floodplain maps I can, yeah. and see, and also maybe we should find out, you know, I mean, it sounds to me like that wording that you read from is a little vague as to is it near a wetland. Right. I mean, right. They don't what's near me? Near. Right. right. So, yeah. you know, maybe we just need to clarify. Is that, that's a, that's a PSV document or what is this that? This is the, uh, this is. What is this document? What's the date of that document? This date is March 1st, 2003. Oh. We're probably past the time. It was 30 days. Well, almost uh, past it. I am downloading oh. the FEMA maps right now. It's not 30 days past. I thought it was, well, it's not today. March 1st, today's the 27th. There's still some. No, I know. Oh, but before, if I go find this out, Sorry. I guess. You guys need to tell me if I find something out, we're not going to have another meeting before the 30 days is up. No. No. I mean, but we... To make a... Yeah. To so this document is part of the, the standard certificate of public good process. It where is. It's sent to all... So abutters. that's a public service board document? Is yes. that what that is? Yes. Okay. It's sent to all abutters and to the town, I guess, because they want to make sure that you have the opportunity to weigh in on, on the project. Well, you know, I mean, we could either we could either give you the authority to do something about it, or I'm happy to take the authority. You know, however you guys want to deal with it. If the, if there's an issue, it probably should be made clear that we became aware of that. If it's, I mean, we don't want to stop the project. Yeah, nor do but, I. But 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 we don't want to be treated. We don't want to be duped by a company coming in and saying. You know, no, it's not near, near wetlands so right. and so forth. And so not that short, we uh, would, you know, I mean. Should right. we check the other one closely now that? I d well, Daniel, I don't know that that is a floodplain. I know that. I'm just talking about the questions on the form. I mean. Where is the other I mean, one? I, I, I don't, don't remember. Uh, it's uh, it's, it's across from the hospital. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking so, just specifically yeah. about floodplain, but I'm talking about other. Issues. I mean, we didn't. I presented we didn't it. Check. We didn't go through it and check to make sure. So you sure knowingly that... presented this information to us? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, the, the other thing about floodplains is that they get revised. And, right. Uh, no. Well, that's what we talked about. Was that you know the FEMA maps had been redone. Right. And, you know, I were these correct? Ones, right. So I don't really know, but they usually don't get revised. They're not very new, are they? The ones that they're. <laughs> Four, yeah. four or five years old, something yeah. like that. Right. So, 
what I'm saying is that the, the lines may move, and right. the frequency of storms may increase over time because right. of our friend global climate change. Um, and none of that really should affect the project. Uh, and my ultimate goal is to see more the, solar. To see more solar and to have it not be in the shade. I mean, so you know, if they did kick things over, it actually would be more in the floodplain. But they should at least have the appropriate answers on the page. I'm not an expert at this, and maybe those answers are acceptable to the Department of Public Service or you know, whoever. Well, we should find out. Yeah. So if you could explore that, and then Public Service Board. Let you know. Let me know. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks for hearing my concern. That sound right to everybody? It sounds good. Yep. Did somebody say hello? I thought so, yeah. It sounded like somebody was bouncing around upstairs or up there too. What was that? Oh, it's that ghost that's putting the that things over the. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello. Um, what are we on? Tar sands. Uh, sorry, tar sands, yes. So now that that has been voted on, right. there's a few things that actually are actionable as part of this. Yeah. I mean, it is an advisory only article. The board doesn't have to take action on it, but right. I want to know from you guys what it is that there's a couple of things that talk about t the town call upon the legislature, the Congress, the state. Do I write a letter? Do we just, is the vote enough? Is there anyone that could do dog licenses at this mm -hmm. point? Uh, no, no and he is not here tonight. Oh, she's, thank you. She's not, and she's not going to be here tonight. Yeah. Daniel. She's not going to be here tonight. Because she's yeah. at, she's out. Sick. So, okay. so they'll have nine to come to back another tomorrow. time. Thank you. I would suggest that you write some brief that this form letter okay. that we can then address to all of the concerned parties listed in the resolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's although is it called I, upon to do. Right, although, we've although is really, it just the fact that we voted? In all the, fairness, we really, you know, we've had a number of these over the years. And, and, we and we're also, somewhat slack on yes. actually carrying it. Well, but I think Cynthia's point of is, it, you know, the fact that we... Is the vote enough to... Exactly. Is that the statement? Uh, a year I or, the, or the, 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 yes, yes, why not? I mean, the fact that it, it was voted and... As, as voted at town meeting 2013. Right. Article 23 uh, of our room. I mean, that's, uh, this is a, this is a document, so... Right, here, uh, here are the... Right, know, I mean, unless they go searching for issues. it. I mean, I'm assuming this issue has been brought up at I the state level. I want to say, almost, right. you know, because these initiatives often are, you know, multi-town, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure what... Right, no, I've heard more about this. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Well, the, actually, there's a number of communities in northern Vermont, you know, that, were, you know, that are obviously directly affected because it's going through... It might uh, be worth I gave a few other times. Okay. You know, checking with the L C T or somebody just to see what our and what those towns what are we do. sending out yeah, in okay. regard to that, maybe. That, well, I, I would suspect that, that as a minimum of fulfilling the will of the voters as yeah. it were, that we would be And you're okay with me you know, going ahead and doing that if that's in what in I, effect. You yeah. Know, yeah. Okay. Statement mm -hmm. along these lines. I, I think the other one that's more I mean, not maybe Re not concerning, but number vendors. two. Yeah. Because we're going to, I would say within the next few months, we'll be talking about. You know, I, I would say let's request it and see what happens. I mean, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to provide us with this information, I wouldn't think. Well, we can give it a try. Yeah, yeah. see what happens. I, I mean, mean I, did we, ask, yeah. did, I did ask our current vendor i mean i think part of it right now the way that the, the fuel was purchased last year was we had nothing to do with the vendor it was gone we went through right we're we're, we're a number of stages removed from right the actual, because the, what, ultimately, the supervisory this is, union, ultimately this is all going to exxon mobile or, or bp or somebody well like that, i mean right? we purchased through right. the supervisory union so they were the ones that were actually doing the talking with the vendors and, sure. and negotiating the the amount, I mean, I can just make them aware if we're going to work with them again that this is something that we 
Right, but they should be able to provide who the vendor is. Yeah. Yeah, I think we ask for the information and see what happens, see what we that, get. You know, we're just kind I, of I mean, I, I, off the line when we go to, uh, you know, say, a wholesale oil company. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's off, you know, I'll forward oil this oil to you guys. Like that, you know, with the, that we're just kicking it up the line. Uh, I'll forward this. And um, I'm guessing they're required to have that they're information. Buying, they're, well, well, they're, they're, they're buying sure. it from someone else right. as well. I'll forward this email to you guys because it is a discussion about to FEMA and request for the flood maps. So they're going to email me. Yeah. We have flood maps. Yeah, we have. We have no, uh, they're going to email me any updates that they have on them. Most recent. Yeah. The new line. But we have. It is an, an odd request. It's the new arbitrary line. No. Thank Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Daniel's our new secretary. Right. We've, got a, we've got a greeter. <laughs> or the major D. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that up again just mm -hmm. so that it doesn't it doesn't get lost yeah, I don't want it to no, get no, lost no, or no, something. No, that's that's yeah, very good. Okay. Really appropriate. Because as, as I said, I think we've you know had these. We have we have followed up on some, but some we have, and but, you're right, right. But I but I do but I do think the statement itself is a big part of it. I, yeah. You okay. know, or, or that's a big part of the expectation. Right. Exactly. Is that we're, you know, it's being voiced publicly kind of thing. So I, I don't know. But just to look at you. That's fine. It's not a big thing. It's okay. Park and ride fire station. So I wanted to make you aware of the fact that the state has once again said that they're going to build a park and ride down to the fire station. Apparently this has been going on for a long time. And do, did they give us any sort of like time frame or anything like they that? They said they... that um, they would like to begin in the fall of this year. They feel like probably with all the permitting process and all of that, it'll be more, you know, they would like to have the permitting done throughout the fall. If they could do construction in the fall, fine. But if not, it would be spring of 2004. This is 14. the state doing it? Yes. And they can't get through the permitting process any faster than any of the rest Well, in our local permitting process, we've oh, got to go through that, go. too. So um, the proposal it's is huge. Big, eh? It has 82 yeah, parking spots, 82? I think. 82? Oh, 82, yeah, right. 85, something the like that. that. It's on a hillside like this. Yeah. You know, with the, with the gullies and whatnot. Um, wow, this is our own little big dig. The beauty of 82 parking spaces is that it leaves plenty of room for the dumpsters. Uh, it does not. <laughs> well, they, they don't approve it, but it, in theory, yeah. <laughs> but there's plenty of room. It is clearly. right where our... No, I know, but uh, it gives us a nice paved pad for them. Yeah. The, the, have you asked about that? They're yet? not letting you put those on that I nice know. paved pad. I know. Good try. Wow. <laughs> So that was my major question for them when we, I was down there walking the, and I was told you will have to move them. And I said, uh, you need to find a spot for them. <laughs> Do we really need 82 I, parking spots? Yeah, I'm just crazy. Out of curiosity, do you know how many spots are the, you know, the right by, uh, uh, Kern, and the Kernhattan? Green Mount, yeah. um, but the one by Green Mount Power. Yeah. I would say maybe there's, Four to thirty-five. Oh, so that's yeah. twice as big as that. Yeah. More. Wow. Um, if you drive into the fire station right now, you know where that little building is. The little, um, you can see that on on this picture. It's right here. So the end of that. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah it's all the way over there, and it goes all the way to the end of where the um, dumpsters, dumpsters, the the recycling are. bins are now, right, where and the then back. Off, right. I mean, there's going to be some clearing of trees back towards the interstate. And what does this say? Does this serve like the Connecticut River Transit? Is that the idea? Or well, just it for serves just the, yeah. The, okay. I mean, there will be a bus shelter there with a bike rack. There will be, so yeah. we'll move that over there? Or this, that oh, be no, this is nice. You ought to see it. It's beautiful. No kidding. Wow, our taxpayer dollars at work, eh? Yeah. Huh, interesting. My guess, I said to him, I said... Instead of putting a solar array on like this public school roof or something. Yeah, exactly. Nice. I said, is there, some more air. <laughs> I said, is there, I said, I, I understand that this has been on the table two or three times, four times, whatever it is. Is this really going to happen? I think they're worried, worried about, about the funding going away. <laughs> so they're pushing. Oh, is that right? right. Yeah. Funding. Oh my God. Oh. 
So, right. so we want to build it right. quickly while we can afford yes. to, and then it can just deteriorate. Right. <laughs> I do have to say, when I drive the length of the state, the park and rides, I mean, Springfield's park and ride I is no. completely full. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. I, I'm trying to cheat, but 82 com- seems huge. You know, me, I was in Springfield this morning, I and be I bet there was 100 cars in that. Of course, that's all that's just right. dirt. It's not any hmm. fancy. Interesting. Where is that? I'm it's right across from where the old Howard, well, Holiday Inn or Howard Junk, yeah. whatever okay. it used to be. Yeah. Okay. A Scott Knees is always So home. where are those people going? Dartmouth? I wonder. Uh, yeah, I don't, I guess, must be up White River. Hmm. Yeah, Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. They're going somewhere. Yeah. So I did really push the recycling, trying to find a place on this piece of property to put the recycling bins. And they're the only place that they think they can go is if you come into the driveway here. You know where the I don't I don't know what it services if it's a sewer or water whatever yeah. it is there. There's a patch of trees over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Putting them there. So they're gonna try to draw them. They won't. They probably won't be as big. There's not a lot of room there. What won't be as big? The recycling bins. They'd have to use oh. smaller containers probably. So who did you talk to about? You These talked were the to the people, state about it? The people from this Hoyle and Tanner Associates, they're the design firm that the state hired to design this. Boy, that would be unfortunate. I, well, I what I said to him was, because I said, what did the state said to him, whoever the state is, I don't know who the person is, said they're going to have to move the recycling containers. And I said, you need That's to go back and tell reason. him that with the new mandatory recycling law that is coming into effect, we need a place to put our containers. Yeah. So we don't have any other place. So you need to mm-hmm. deal with this. You know. need to have to move them back to where they were. Yeah. 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 So. Or to the highway department, mm-hmm. and that would be productive, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be bad. Um, and over here is not a possibility? No, there Why wasn't not? enough room. Even and the, the way they, the trucks turn, I don't know, they did look over here and there just wasn't enough. Who's, who, uh, and it was Tom and the two guys from this place and I, we were all out there wandering around and... And okay. this is written in stone, per se? I don't think so. Across the street here. No, I did yeah. say that. It would be a pretty spot for it. <laughs> I did say that. I'm like, well, there's a spot right over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I did, I just wanted to make you aware that this is, once again, on the... Well, they just reorganized the whole community garden group. Maybe they could have a recycling bin division to figure out where in the community garden could go. Other than, other than that, that, there were no other major, Tom didn't have any other major concerns. I mean, he was concerned about truck traffic going through here. And we told them to add, you know, if they're going to put they're going to add a walkway from the parking garage or the parking spot over to kind of towards the fire station. So if for some reason there's something that we hold there that that parking lot is used. But other than that, there wasn't, it was, to me, it was just the recycling containers was the problem. Yeah. No, so that's the, entr- is the, the entrance to this sharing with the fire? Yep. Yes. Jesus, I, I, you know, just as per yeah. our discussion earlier today, that that was a giant bugaboo about getting that driveway yeah. put in there to begin with. The other thing I asked them about. I think that was. Rocks. I think that no, uh, but that was part of it. Was that that was the, the, this battle was this, this long term plan through this? through this? I, find that I did ask that them about it. a light out there. You know when you go through towns and when there is an emergency sure. going on. Yes, so that, that the, he was going to check into that because Tom says it is a problem now. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so he was going to check into that. You can't have it where, I mean, it's just the traffic goes through there. Excuse me. Yep. Yeah. Is the town clerk's office open? No, it's not. She's it's, sick tonight, yep, so she's not out. here. This is the second Wednesday night in a row I've come to register my dogs and it's been closed. I. Yeah, we're going to have 82 extra parking spaces. It's not going to help the general store. This, uh, oh, man. 
It's not um, boy, this is getting all the rumbles. Well, parking wise. No, oh, <laughs> just being, oh, yeah. I see. That's the big issue. There's yeah, parking. Yeah, really. you know, I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, I, I mean. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I mean, what I, um, I think that those recycled containers are carried away more often now because they're full. Yeah. Oh, I would. It's, it's definitely getting. Location, it, it would be really too bad if yeah. they down. That was a really I mean, I don't, I, good solution. Yeah. Good place for them to go. Yeah. You know, plenty of room. Plenty of room where you're not. You know, in the way of emergency access and whatnot. Yeah. Plus, I'm guessing it's significantly cleaner than it. Used yeah, to be. it's Certainly easier. easier that yeah, way. or it's easier to clean up. And it's not sitting in the middle of town. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, right. basically in a in a commercial and business environment. You're right. It still happens, but I think people are a little more timid about just leaving junk. Cause well, it's and there's a, there's there's a camera on the oh, is on the fire station. Oh, good. So. Um, you know, I don't know how much re how much enforcement they do mm -hmm. via that. But well, I mean, I don't know whether we have any say in it, but maybe we say, yeah, this is great. Except you have to figure out where the you know the that size recycling well, monsters. Right. I don't yeah. know. I, you know, I don't know whether we can do I that. Mean, maybe not. Like is I it? said, putting them back where they were is not going to appeal to the no. the owner of that property very much. No, uh, I, that, that doesn't owner appeal. Of that property I, does have a little yank on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't doesn't make any sense. Do, does the state have like a domain or something on this idea? Or Technically, or? they probably do, but okay. but. But it's, I mean, it's a long-term plan for this. this. The plan for this existed prior to Putney acquiring, leasing this land, take uh, uh, buying this land from, uh, this, from the state, where the it was part of the was, agreement was an old right. uh, highway department, state highway department substation. Sand, uh, sand and salt depository oh, okay. pit. Okay. Yeah, this has been in the works for decades. Right. Yeah. yeah, the guy that was from this company said that this was one of the first the projects he started working on. He said, I, I think that, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm so I said to him, I said, so what makes me think it's going to happen this time? And I basically, they're worried that yeah, it's just some of this federal funding Damn. is going to be gone. And this uh, so project has been out there for some federal flow through and they've got to use it up. Yeah. They will um, have to go through the local yeah, exactly. But we can spend that kind of money on this. Um, do, it, it, while you were out, we were discussing. I mean, can we say to them, uh, do we? Yeah, fit in our our recycling center, or we'll make the local permitting process we'll real make this for impossible for you. I kind of implied that. Right. right. I mean, that's what they have to do. We have yeah, to be able I mean, to get the dumpsters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm ultimately. sure that I don't know what and would happen. I doubt happen. we have we real did. power. But I don't I think we have a lot of power. But they I own the land can, as part of our lease that right. this was going to happen. We can make a snit out of it. I know it. I right, but, but, but they might be able to shift this line that, that way and that line that way. and Right, and make them flexible. Yeah, we'll have to see what he comes back. I mean, I made it. And I don't I don't know, one, whether... Well, I mean, we were just talking about the fact that those those recycling dumpsters are full. You know, yeah. It, it, smaller ones isn't going to be. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, for well, us. we're victims well, we of our own success. To win, to, to to win well, we waste about coming more often. But I'm not sure they have smaller dumpsters yeah. available and or whether they can do that. I mean, we well, have for to, the forty something thousand dollars we pay them a year. I think that they can. Well, we'd have to ask them. Yeah. I mean, because it, it, it may it may not, you know. Yeah. Put those dumpsters up in my yard for forty thousand dollars a year. I mean, I, I, I I'm not very patient. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, they, they may say, hey, these are the ones we have. So if you can't fit them, then right, right. Yeah, I, I think that there. I when I got the feeling when I left, he was very clear that I had made it very clear. He, yeah, it was clear in his brain that it was not really going to be, there was going to be a problem with. Yeah, okay, good. We'll make, not we'll, that I threatened him or anything, but it was like, I, I, you know, they're making this mandatory law, mandatory recycling right, law. Right, right. 
And if we have not one spot in the town of Putney to put our recycling containers that are utilized continually, then, then how do we comply problem. with that? Right. Well, so, by, through expense to the town, by yeah. either acquiring, leasing, or modifying <coughs> property that yeah. we do have. So we'll... In other words, undue hardship. Undue expenditure. Yeah. And, 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 and. So we'll see what they come back with. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Good. CPA. I just Budget. would like to know if we are thinking that we should go out to bid on the audit, or do we would just want to stay? I have, I have a couple people each year since I've been here for the last five years say, Absolutely. "Why don't we ever go out to bid? Why don't we ever go out to bid?" Well, why don't we? I don't know. I mean, right. no, I'm not. Uh, I'm, no, I'm no, asking. No, you know, uh, yeah. should we? Should we and see what happens, and if Mudgett comes in? I suspect our, our logic may have been, just given... Continuity. Right, right. continuity, right. and that, that we were in a process, yep. you know, to get to a point where the, the, uh, the audit was, you know, con consistently coming up right. Yeah. And, and keeping a sense of continuity within that. Uh, but at this point, I mean, why do we do it? I mean, do we I didn't want to, do it to every last year? year because of the change. As opposed to once every three years? Why is that three years numbers? What do you mean, have an audit? Or, yeah. Yeah. It is every year. It mm. was a requirement because we needed a single audit because right. of our. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not more, sure that right? we do I don't anymore think so. because we refinanced. Right. But, so right. we may not. Because that's, you know, right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean it's, not I, I, it's not necessarily it's not. a bad idea. Oh no, anyway, I mean, I, but but, it, it, but it, it's probably worth it, putting right. it out to bid just to see what we get, and yeah, you know, okay. Unless, unless they're, I mean, why? The, the, I, I was no, know, I know. It's sort of a rhetorical question, but why not? Is there any reason why not to? I don't think there's a reason not to. I mean, I know there's a lot of towns that stick with the same one for years and years and years. There's no requirement to go out to bid for that kind of service. Um, the continuity of having a, a, the same auditor, then the, because a new auditor comes in, the cost is going to go up because they're not starting from scratch, but they're right. you know learning how you do things. Well, but having a new set of eyes on it is not a bad thing. I mean, there's all the there's rules, pros and cons. What are, the, what are our rules concerning a bid on this? Do we absolutely have to accept the lowest bid, or do we have I think we can discretion, the, particularly yeah. if it's you know a hundred dollars separating the, the the bills or or the, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it, all things being equal, we just assume to stay with Mudger. The, the familiarity and consistency. Obviously, if there's a $30,000 difference, it, it, right. it takes right. you know, looking at it. Yeah, but yeah. definitely. If it's a $30 yeah, Well, difference. that's what that's what I would be interested in. I mean, what did our audit cost last year? It's rough. 12. Yeah, I was going to say it's roughly 12, 12, 12, right? 12, yeah. right. Which so, is cheap. And is it, of course, as, a lot, as, a lot of people are paying. as the audit... Yeah, is is basically the, the the fiscal situation of the town is is controlled and in, in good shape that it's a cheaper audit that's, is yeah. because it just well takes he's pretty less, much stayed to, takes less work to well do that's the other audit. maybe downside to doing it he may say okay now it's time for me to rebid this project mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. doing it for mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. he's been trying to keep it pretty mm -hmm. consistent because we've had such a good relationship so. I don't know. I kind of. I mean, I felt like I needed to bring it to you guys because I am being asked why we don't do uh, that. Is, <laughs> does it does it hurt to you know put out requests you know, for bids yeah. or you know? No, I mean that's the one right. downside. That Cynthia, it, budget may go up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 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 We'll find out. Yeah. All right. So I'll write something up yeah. to um, and then have you look at it and see. He's assuming you make ten to twelve thousand. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was ten to twelve hundred. No. A big deal. Right? <laughs> okay. No, it's oh, expensive. Yeah. That's yeah. Surprising. <laughs> I mean, it's a significant document, and they. Mm -hmm. I think probably part of what you're paying for is sort of the liability they accept of certifying that it's yeah. correct and so on and so forth. I don't even know. But. Okay. Public safety committee discussion. Yeah, I think we just need, we need to start this. Do we want to 
put something out and ask people to respond to this? Like, would you like to serve an on the public? open invitation? Well, and see who, because I think there's a lot of interest. Yeah. And I think there needs to be a decision made of how many people we want to see on this committee. And Keep it small. Yeah. And but if you know, I've had you. I know you've had some people approach you. I've had a couple of people approach me. But I think that we need to kind of open it up so that we. I mean, I don't know how you choose. <laughs> I mean, that's that's up to you guys. But I mean, that's how I've seen it most of. The, I mean, I don't know how it happened. You guys did a really good job with the delinquent tax. Right. Committee, so I would assume right. if we use that same method, which I'm not quite sure what it is, but well, that was only three people. That's what I, I mean. I would say I, I would say maybe five with, for with this. A, with a very right. uh, with a, with a very you know short agenda and you know a quick date, you know, yeah. a short working period, you know, and keep the question specific. You know, it's, it's Having basically accepted the concept of, of full-time police coverage, what do we wish to do it singularly as the town of Putney or in agreement with the town of Westminster? I, you know, I know we've talked a long time about the public safety committee. There's there's a broader discussion that gets into the whole right, but maybe fire we'll start issue with that. And, yeah, you know, fire yeah. protection and, and public safety issues funding all of those issues that are that are that are bigger but for the for the specifics that we were addressed at town meeting about this and and sort of the the, the, the basic consensus that was established you know that we would accept the, the concept of full time you know which i think was the, the yeah. that was one of the real questions and the next being whether we do it with Westminster or uh, by ourselves um well, why don't why don't you and or I touch base with the people that I've spoken to previously mm -hmm. about this? Um, we can talk about that tomorrow and see who of them are willing and able to. And I'd, I'd, I'd approach them with the thought that that there is this larger right prospect but, and discussion. And would they be interested in that? But that specifically that we address this, yeah. uh, the, 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 you know, yeah. the policing issue, contractually. I just think we, in general, just for, you know. Well, we need to do that. We need to do it. Yeah. Right. Okay. We got to get it done. Yeah. So we're going to, you and I are going to touch base about this yeah. process. Okay. Does that okay. sound reasonable? Mm hmm Okay. Just go right to Warren's. <laughs> I don't really Did have Denise, much to Does this warrant our attention? Denise checked up for us. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was the, like, yeah. Um, I hope he knows what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> that I'm doing something. <laughs> Thanks. That's yeah. okay. Now you really made him feel yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I, I've just, for some reason, Somewhere in my head. Sorry. Um, so are we not? You don't have much for us that we we've, we've talked about. I think we've talked about a lot tonight. You I mean, so? a lot of you guys are signing that. I can just update you on that the whole pest preparedness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The grant that was available, the five hundred dollars, we could apply for it, but I met with Pam Hubbage and. Um, and Carrie yesterday. Yeah. And when we sat down and talked about what we wanted the funding for, we really didn't know. We really couldn't come up with, and you have to use it by November 1st, and a plan has to be done by November 1st. So they're checking into a few more things, and I'll follow up with that if, if we think we want to um, apply for it. And then the whole I-91 signage question about Landmark yeah. and Putney School. Yeah. They, can't, they won't allow Putney School on the sign. Why? Because the state law says... It's got to be within a certain distance. It, no, it is... Uh, 
The allowable destination under statute do not include secondary schools, so the Putney School is not an eligible destination, but Landmark College is. Well, hmm. So if you get a question about that, if Landmark yeah. gets a sign put up and nobody else does. Was this? It must have been this one Brad on here. It must have been. Must have been one to this. Okay, so it's March 1st. Yes, I saw that. Should, maybe I could cross it out and write his name in. Can we do yeah. that? Just cross Brad's um, name out and write. And V or PH? PH is correct. Okay. I, yeah, I was going to mention in the, the, in the minutes. Okay. The, it's it's a, a PH. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was okay. going to be important or not, but I was going to mention it. How did I spell it on there? Did yeah, this is correct okay. here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. And then Brian and I had a meeting yesterday Is with B trans representatives. Mm -hmm. No, just this one. Just the one. Yeah. Talking about the Sorry, what? Uh, yesterday we had a meeting with Brian and I had a meeting with John Alexander yeah. and a couple other people from V trans and. So maybe just. Uh, 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 Talked yeah. about the structures grants for bridges and culverts and yeah. paving grants. They said we can probably you won't get paving money, but every five years but they want you to apply every year. So we will be applying for a grant because they want it on their schedule of how many people, and then if somebody doesn't apply, right. then, maybe we then you're on the list. Okay. So Brian, we're working on those two things. Yeah, we've, we've, five always, years? we've always got an outstanding paving project that, that we'll need doing. Right. So that Brian's aware of how to work that in. Yeah. Said. So that was a good meeting, and they um, the structures grant, apparently there was I said to the, the guy that does the hydraulic studies and all of that, I said, do we have any that like we were going to do and just never got done? And there was one up on Hickory Ridge, I think, that they did a hydraulic study on. It's one that Brian identified as an issue, a culvert. And um, so we might try to get apply for that, depending on the cost. I don't know if we have the 10 or 20 percent that we need to cover our share, but so that was good, just getting Brian familiar with that process and meeting everybody. So. Um, I went to a meeting this morning in Dummerston about the gravel pit, <clears throat> and basically it was just hashing out the details of sort of how things are going to get going, um, assuming we get the permit in a reasonably timely fashion. Um, you know, the biggest issue was um, crusher because Zaluzny has a crusher right. in there. Right. We're not allowed to, MSHA We will. still are operating the one we own with Dummerston? No. No, that, no we've that been contracted. That's been this year, yeah. the last few years now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. contracted. Right. Um, so it was a discussion of whether, and the, the same person who we <coughs> contracted with the last couple years is willing to do it they, their price is 350 a foot or 350 a yard for the crushing. Um, Zaluzny charges four dollars a yard, um, but AMSHA, you cannot have two crushers running material from the same face of a pit at the same time for some AMSHA reason. Um, so we can't put a second crusher in there. So basically, uh, Mike agreed to pay a, a higher price for his gravel to Steve Zaluzny so that to offset the loss the because basically basically you know we said well it's already been voted that this is what we're you know our budget is what our budget is um, and we recognized both us and Dummerston recognized that this was you know, Steve Zaluzny basically said, you know, it should cost five bucks a yard, and I'm doing it for four because I'm providing a service to people. Um, and for 350, he didn't know how they did it, kind of thing. So, you know, we just we need to be aware in the future that if we want to have a relationship with Zaluzny, then we need to be aware of the fact that he took a hit this year, kind of thing. So, um, but otherwise, clearing will start, if the permit goes ahead, they'll start clearing the upper part in probably June, May, June, somewhere in there, depending on Mike's schedule, and start working into there. So um, everything's going to kind of go ahead as, as allowed by permit. The permit, for all practical purposes, I gather, is 
all but issued. It's just what restrictions will come with it. So, um, so that's what that is. This is so. Is this the one up above the old airport? Kind of. Yes. Off on that end. Well, um, uh, the, the, we behind those houses. And we're that kind of sharing that. Well, it's the the pit that we're getting that we're going in on is owned by Micronode, which is actually, you know, where the um, by the DOT there and ABF, mm -hmm. there's Hidden Acres Campground. Yeah. It's actually that property. Oh, so yeah. it's the back side of it, but mm -hmm. we're going in through that pit that you see, which belongs to oh, I saw. Okay. a private entity. Yeah. So we're going in that way. Um, and that's managed by the, the pit operations are managed by his losing. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we're going in from that end and working jointly with them. So we were just sort of figuring out the details of who's going to, how that's going to work, since the road is initially going to go in from that end, which works out better for everybody. Okay. Um, okay. And then just very quickly, yeah. is this what we sent out for the bid? Were there drawings? Were there? Yeah, there's drawings. Okay, there are yeah. because. Um, you know, the only thing that I found of any real value was the description of the fiberglass building, which is this. Um, otherwise, it's all, this is just all, how, it's amazing. I mean, I, you know, I didn't read it every page, but I, I went through it reasonably thoroughly, and it is, you know, how to, how to engage in a contract, what the contract shall state, blah, 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 blah. You know, but there's no specifications in here for anything specific. It all refers to drawings, it refers to other things. So, um, you know, I think this is, I think we can handle this on our own. Okay. Um, I mean, this is, there's like three spots in here, or well, there's probably a dozen, but I, I caught three of them that specifically refer to, you know, the size and the shape of something we're doing, but otherwise this could go out to any wastewater treatment project anywhere. That included, except it specifies the size of the thing. I think what we would need to do if we were gonna do this on our own is get the specs that are expected from the fiberglass, you know, whoever, we would want to know what our fiberglass unit was. To then and know what to put it. Exactly. Yeah. And they would specify what we put, what it, on. We put it on. And then like the electrical, I mean, it goes on and on about electrical and it goes on, you know, wastewater and so on and so forth. You know, we need to just know where the outlets are going to be. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, because they, the building is all outfitted with the electrical. Exactly. So we need, so to, you know, we need the it. specs from the company that we purchased one of these fiberglass things from. And otherwise, I don't see. I don't see anything. That's about probably why it's two hundred and twenty something thousand dollars. Because they have to read this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to pay me that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, you know, it really is. Uh, there's surprisingly little in here. I mean, you know, like the the statement that I think sort of describes mostly what's in here is, you know. Um, when it talks about the concrete, um, let's see, form work, uh, handling, yeah. Um, it, it basically just says that, you know, the, the um, requirements, the, the uh, design of concrete form work is the contractor's responsibility. So it's like everything is the contractor's, that, that's how those, this whole thing reads, okay. contractor's responsibility. There's no, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what we really paid for, but I guess that's have some drawings. Six hundred pages of CYA. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> unbelievable. It really is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, as as All right. So I'll have it. Chemical release. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it's hard for us. To, I think we can manage it in house, and I think the only thing that probably has to go out to bid, my guess would be, just based on the scope of this thing, is the is the building itself. I, you know, we can choose to go out to bid with, but there's not more than five thousand bucks worth of concrete. In this concrete thing. Okay. There's not more than five thousand dollars worth of electrical. electrical. In this yeah. So really, go out to bid for the five thousand dollars worth of, of excavating. Yeah. 
that there's probably a stack of these buildings sitting somewhere too, you know, in a surplus yeah. situation, you know, that they've been used on. How do you feel about our work, our highway guys doing any of the site work? Should we just hire? We should just hire it because, so too, you also. know, they, they're capable, but what, you know, we're, they're going to, we're taking them off doing something else that's right. going to be done. No, we're better, you know, we're better off having them working on So we're looking around for, you yeah, know, was just a suggestion. for busy work for them, you know. Yeah. And as soon as it becomes, you know, something more than, you know, an afternoon of doing something, then it's not busy work. Right. It's, yeah. it's you're taking them away from doing something else that it's got to be done. Yeah. You know, there's always... And it's we're not be looking at, to be I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, whatever it is, nine by 14 structure, eight by 14 structure, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not a whole lot of excavating. I mean, there's not, create a little pad, oh, and that's the way they better. I'd be having them go down to the building now, that might be fun. At least yeah, <laughs> stuff in his <laughs> bounce <bell -stick>. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can just go, <laughs> and it's going to follow. Yeah. <laughs> Into the dumpster. Okay. okay. Good. I don't have anything else. I don't think, I don't, we don't need an executive session tonight. We don't. I'm not ready for that now. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Good. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. 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 Sorry. That was a long one. <laughs>